I, I do love documenting things, so when Lily Aituelaita came and did a residency at the college, she, I, I took a photograph of her talking to the then principal, Dennis McGrath, and he took a picky of me with Lily. I've actually photographed various stages. The 1940s was really, really important for education in New Zealand, but also for art education. And I believe the two are incredibly linked together. And the reason I say that is one key person, Dr Clarence Beebe, who became Director of General of Education from 1940 to 1960. And Beebe was one of those people who thought that art and crafts were equally important. These two paintings, one by Louise Henderson, uh, the Cubist portrait of a woman dated 1964, and one of Robert Ellis's motorway series, also 1964, are indeed two of the most valuable works. Louise um, didn't start actually painting full time till 1950, and in 1952 she did a stint in Paris where she got introduced to Cubism, and uh, particularly the work of Metzinger, and this portrait of the Cubist woman was done then. In terms of the Robert Ellis, he's from the UK and during the Second World War was in the photographic unit of the RAF. And obviously the bird's eye view that he uses on that motorway series for so many years was definitely influenced by seeing all those roads and rivers running through the landscape at a, at a kind of what I call a bird's eye view. Quite a lot of the work in the collection, the paintings for instance, were basically oil paintings and quite traditional prints, um, you know, as, as was the time. And so when I started leading the committee, I thought, right, we've certainly got to, to make some changes. And one of those was to try and purchase works that were made by more ethnically and culturally diverse artists. The second criteria was to collect works that were made with less traditional media and through very differing ways of working. Robin White, woodcuts, Anne Hill, that beautiful unframed canvas. Iwani Iwani, his work made with Siapo for his Samoan heritage. Peter Smith, a combination of aluminium, watercolour and paper. And Robert Yonke, we know his work is full of multimedia, bone, stone, metal, stainless steel, etc. That work has got a beautiful energy. It demands you to have some time with it. So this, this huge fusion that Bob managed, I think, of um, amazing technique and uh, craft with a, quite a high level of spirituality. One of the things about the work is that it engages in new media, like it's not a carved pataka. And so you become apprehensive because basically what you're doing is pushing the agenda in terms of the reconfiguration of um, elements associated with Fakaido, elements associated with Lassus' work or Tutu, um, and also elements associated with architectural form. Then in the 1990s, Camilla Highfield, corrugated iron, wooden picket and enamel, Carol Shepherd, mixed media on paper, Warren Visco, the beautiful carved Pururi moth, and Lily Aitui later, who uses collage on building paper. It's pretty raw and it's pretty primal and, and that's what I was into at the time, so I'm having a conversation more than anything. You know, and I'm like hitting it with my hands and I'm creating sort of space and it's about the space beyond the surface. Well, I think it's a very significant collection. It's a very old collection. The art collections have been collected over probably the last 50, 60 years. So we've got representative works of some of the most major artists in Aotearoa. The whole story of art education is sitting within the Epsom campus collection. You look into a work and you find back there that 
It might be the artist as a teacher, um, and it might be that there's other associations with education. I think it is quite special, and um, it has evolved over time, and of necessity it has reflected the diverse, multicultural nature of Aotearoa New Zealand.